I think it was available last Wednesday. No, it was available last Wednesday without the recordings. And I think by Friday, I finished it all. So, um, so this is all complete. It, as you are looking through it, you should, oh wait, I need to change that because I did make the parameter measurement. Let me change that so that people are not misled. Um, let's see here. Yeah, it's all complete. Um, um, so the lab, lab activity information and instructions here should be complete. You should have everything you need to, to get started on the investigation. And uh, again, I acknowledge that <laughs> um, for those of you who have been asking for um, kind of step-by-step -step instruction, it doesn't exist almost on purpose. <laughs> um, what does exist is um, some prelim preliminary investigation as a way to uh, uh, guide you uh, into uh, working through the situations that are presented in this lab activity. And, um, and I have provided the primary objective, which is to um, do this <laughs> for a variety of electrostatic setups with these <laughs> being the suggested setups. And um, what, what I really want it to be is uh, for you to think through it. For example, here's an example. Uh, one of the electrostatic setup that I'm suggesting that you could uh, use to analyze is the one involving a Wimshurst machine as it powers the pith ball. Uh, I don't know the proper name for it. I'm just calling it pendulum as it powers the pith ball pendulum. And I hope you can recognize the video that can be used to do this analysis. If you scroll up under the pith ball pendulums, I do have one video exactly with the Wimshurst machine. And this video does um, show all the information you would need. So there's a voiceover which I've muted. You'll have to watch it and see. And you can, uh, this video includes the information that you would uh, have gained in a face to face, in, in an in person lab by um, you know, having the machine at your station and running it and actually making the measurements. So somewhere along here, I just uh, turn it briefly and, oh wait, I skipped over that part. I turn it, I turn it briefly and they maintain some separation. And on the video, you can measure the number of pixels. And then the, later on, there's a part where I show the, uh, I show the ruler so that you can relate the scales on the video to actual length scales. So, so all the necessary information is there. What is not there is um, um, on the hand holding step-by-step -step instruction and that is deliberately not there. Uh, for one, it's so to, an ask, to, to a degree, Let's see. I don't want to limit the depth to which you can get into in, uh, in pursuing these investigations. The first uh, situation alone, there's actually quite a bit of depth to which you can get into. You can, you can just uh, analyze this setup alone. And if you are getting into far enough depth, you can have a really good lab report based on this uh, first, first situation alone. And on the other hand, you can have a brother with a less depth approach where you investigate all five situations at the very surface, a very obvious level, and that can actually result in a good lab report as well. That's, um, big, that can result in good lab report as well. You can kind of think of it as a survey of different setups. And because it's a survey, you have a limited amount of time. That's what justifies you not getting into uh, very much depth into each one of these items. And so if I were to provide step-by-step uh, -step instruction, basically what I have to do is I have to choose your path for you. Uh, and, and I don't want, I'm deliberately trying not to do that. 
So, um, so when you go through the preliminary, preliminary investigation, it does uh, focus a little bit on the Van der Graaff generator and well, one and two does. And it doesn't actually get into the, the PFBO pendulum at all. That's where you kind of have to recall back to one of the homework questions, which had that similar setup that had um, two, P, two PFBOs that are separated by some distance and you had to calculate the electric force. That's the kind of calculation you had to go through. So, um, so you know, I'm leaving that all for you to do <laughs> and I'm happy to answer questions. And uh, I'm happy to support you um, in your investigation along the path that you have chosen. But because there's just so many different paths that can be chosen, and I want to leave all those options open, I'm not giving you step-by-step -step instruction. So with that, let me just pause here, pause the recording here for a bit, so that um, in case there are people who have been working on the lab, um, people who have questions, I can address it. If somehow um, capturing that question and answer on the recording is appropriate, I can always turn the recording back on. But let me just start by pausing the recording uh, for covering some of this uh, portion now. So I'm going to pause the recording. And if people have any questions, I'll address it. And then I'll resume the recording when it seems right. <laughs> 